Hello there, Commonwealth from here. In our search for the hopefully 2024 Zelda Switch release, we have overfocused on the less popular Zelda games and failed to focus on the game that was the second best-selling Zelda until Breath of the Wild launched. That's right, Twilight Princess. Though in truth, we use Twilight Princess HD. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press that notification bell. But why this game? Since in a number of videos, we have brought up the anniversary Zelda games of 2024, that being the Minish Cap, and 2023, the Wind Waker HD and a link between worlds. Latitude didn't get to celebrate their anniversaries last year as Tears of the Kingdom's delay got in their way. But Twilight Princess is the other candidate. And it mirrors Tears of the Kingdom's Hyrule closer. Well, at least the kingdom before the calamity. But one where Ganondorf and a different villain are scheming to take over. Twilight Princess is also the Zelda game that is the easiest to bring over from the Wii U to the Nintendo Switch. For a number of reasons. The first is that this HD version of the game was released the closest of any Zelda title to Breath of the Wild. In fact, during its reveal we got a brief glimpse of the new world of Zelda, with its second release date. <laughs> but the connection between the two was no coincidence, as the two games were connected together through the Wolf Link amiibo both on the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch versions in 2017. Either way, the second reason is the lesser gamepad integration compared to the Wind Waker HD. There's simply not much to lose by removing it. You're not navigating a great sea, but fragments of Hyrule Field and linear corridors, so you don't need the map as much. Finally, number three, the gameplay is simply closer to what we're used to in Breath and Tears. Horseback combat, crossing a larger territory of land with varied landscapes, and what is more, swimming on the water in Hyrule's lake and rivers. A gameplay feature missing in the Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, and even Tears of the King. In fact, Twilight Princess has some of the best water gameplay activities in the series, and could serve as great inspiration for the development of the next Zelda title. The rafting balloon minigame is awesome, so is the fishing port. Then you have the dungeons, probably the best integrated story-wise in the entire series. But less about the strongest sides of Twilight Princess HD, but more about what it can bring to the Switch. They made a realistic looking Zelda title that could benefit from a similar streamlining of its notorious opening hours, as we got for Skyward Sword HD. All to give us the ultimate version of the game. One that is worthy of a $60 price tag. Yes, it is likely to get this price, as every Zelda is pretty much a $60 guarantee. But hopefully, if true, we could see a few tweaks here and there for this release. Indeed, from the already tweaked Wii U HD version, which combined the original GameCube and Wii versions, in part by turning the latter into Hero Mode. It is all there, but to be real with you, I see three options here, and divided between the Nintendo Switch and the next system, do I see one option, more likely than the other. The first one is the one we're currently going over. Single game $60 release just like on the Wii U. Plain and simple, it is just that the Wind Waker HD has some stronger arguments. For one, it sold more on the Wii U. Secondly, it has been longer since set release, over 10 years to be precise. And third, the art style of that game has simply aged better. Luckily for Twilight Princess, there is hope in something the Zelda team hasn't done since the early 2000s. Namely, a dual game Zelda Bundle. Back then it was done with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Now it could be the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. Yes, we should expect $80 or more in this scenario, but anything under 110 US dollars for these two games will be a bargain combined. The last Wii U to Switch port, but leaving no 3D Zelda missing on the Nintendo Switch, when we count Switch Online expansion pack with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. If true, then this combo will be the most important non-new Zelda game reveal in a long time. It could in fact be the big bombshell announcement in the next Nintendo Direct, and I do believe that is the right way to go, since these two on their own are just ports of remakes slash remasters of two classic games. But sold together, they become something much more than that. The justification to bring them over to the Nintendo Switch, and then have them playable with the rumored backwards compatibility on the success, unless Nintendo has bigger plans for these two games namely saving them for said successor and turning the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD into the Wind Waker 4K and Twilight Princess 4K. Just think of it, 
the most open Zelda games prior to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom's open air, potentially reimagined and brought to a whole new graphical level, the final and ultimate versions of these two Zelda classics. A name change and a new system might be just what the Kyoto Giant might be seeking to justify such a move, though it doesn't have to mean that is what we will end with. This backwards compatibility might be one of Nintendo's strategies for Nintendo's next system. Ironically, Twilight Princess, which originally sold far more copies of the Wii than the GameCube version, was the only game to get releases on three Nintendo systems in a row. The GameCube version, which was backwards compatible on the Wii, the Wii version, which was backwards compatible on the Wii U, and the Wii U HD remaster, which was back... Oh, wait. <laughs> Joking aside, I think Nintendo might be thinking the following, after remaking or remastering all classic 3D Zelda games in the span of exactly one decade from 2011 to 2021. If we are to do anything more with these games on the Switch and not the next system, then it has to be the prologue to something big. Say, a proper 4K remake of Ocarina of Time to finally bring this game to the state it deserves to be. It is a truly peculiar case. Two awesome Zelda games originally developed for the GameCube being stuck on the Wii U. That is unless they can get a last system year to a release on the Nintendo Switch. And I think the probability for that has never been higher throughout this generation. Not only that, since this is near the end of the system's life cycle, only one move makes sense. Bundling the first two Zelda games in HD together. It will be a truly unique way of releasing these games for a third time and more than filling up the space before the next 2D top-down Zelda game or at the very least remake. And hopefully Ocarina of Time 4K at some point. With that being said, this strategy could work only if the Nintendo Switch 2 is backwards compatible. The reason as to why is very simple. There isn't enough time for these games to sell before the succession occurs sometime in 2025. In the less fortunate instance of no backwards compatibility, I sadly fear the following outcome. That the Zelda team will spread out these two releases, meaning that the Wind Waker HD might still come out on the Nintendo Switch, but Twilight Princess HD will have to wait a few years before it can become Twilight Princess 4K. Which, to be completely honest, is something that could benefit this game to grant it an ultimate version that will never be changed again in the future. Alright, that was a lot, but to sum up, Twilight Prince HD on the Nintendo Switch is possible, though most likely not alone, as Nintendo probably wants to avoid a déjà vu or repeat of launching Twilight Prince HD alone exactly one year before the release of the next system. You know, exactly what happened in March 2016 before the launch of the Nintendo Switch with Breath of the Wild in March 2017. More than the Wind Waker HD, Twilight Prince HD is dependent on a dual game bundle in the final year of the Nintendo Switch. That is to say, for a second half of 2024 release. The alternative is a later and far more uncertain release. In particular, if the Ocarina of Time 4K hope and dream turns into reality within the next five years. What are your thoughts and hopes for a potential Twilight Prince HD on the Nintendo Switch? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press notification bell to make this video more visible. And last but not least, a big thanks to all of our patreon.com slash common patrons. Special shoutouts go to Royal Producers Zach Johnson and JC Funk, and Heroes, Holly Wolf, Cheryl and Garrett Hoy. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.